Hi there, welcome along to another video for you to row along with. Today's session is going to be a slightly mixed up interval session. You're going to go 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, okay? So not too complicated. And that's after a 4 minute warm up, which we'll just get into now. First things first, make sure to set your drag factor. There's other videos about that on YouTube, etc. I've got one of my own. Um, put your monitor so that it's at eye height, so you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down, so you can keep a nice straight back. And have your foot stra straps so that they cover the bottom lace of your shoe, or in my case in socks, kind of round about, round about the point where it's comfortable for me to hinge forward, so kind of round about the, the hinge of my toes, okay? So a four minute warm up, and we're going to just start off with some nice light rowing at round about 18 strokes a minute, okay? Here we go. <sighs> Here we go. So I'm already fluffing my lines so far today, so let's hope today's session gets a bit better. So there you go, 17, 18 strokes a minute. So let's just get moving. Don't worry too much for this first minute about technique or anything like that. Let's just take a shot across the bow of your body and say, hey body, we're about to do some work. So just row. Maybe think about driving through your legs, but don't worry about anything else. Just get that heart rate up a little bit. Blow, blow away some cobwebs. That's a minute done. So now what I want you to do is to start thinking about your some of the technique aspects, so maybe your are your shins vertical at the front of the stroke? Are your shoulders relaxed? Your arms relaxed? Grip relaxed? Just to let the power go through your legs, into your arms, into the flywheel. And then rocking forward from a one o'clock at the front to 11 o'clock at the back. Using your hips to rock. Don't worry, I'll go through all this in the main session. We've got 25 minutes together really, so. Now if you can hear any squawking in the background, hang on. All right, let's get ready here. Single leg rowing, okay? Oh, I'm not doing well. So take one leg out and just drive with the other one. Full stroke still. There we go. Not too much, just drive normally. Don't overdo it with your left or right leg. Last stroke and we'll swap legs. Ugh, here we go. Yeah, I've got the crew app running next to the machine right now. I didn't realize that it talks to you. So you might be able to hear some metallic voice going on in the background from time to time. Don't worry, you're not hearing things. All right, last stroke like this, both feet back in. Now let's just do some arms only rowing, okay? So legs straight, use your hip rock, and then I pull in and think about putting the handle over your knees before your hips rock forwards, okay? So stroke, handle away, rock forwards. Nice powerful back. I keep rounding mine, don't copy me. Last stroke like this, and let's move to just legs only rowing. So arms straight this time, just drive with the legs. You'll see I'm slightly faster than the 18 strokes a minute, I'm up about 20 right now. Just cause, well just cause. Alright, a couple more strokes like this. Fit in one more and then we're all done. All done for the warm up anyway. So, have a drink. Maybe continue sliding up and down the rail while I talk you through what we're doing today. Okay? 
today's session then, we're going to do 10 minutes at 20 strokes a minute, then we're going to rest 2 minutes, followed by 5 minutes at 28 strokes a minute, rest 2 minutes, and then a final 10 minutes at 20 strokes a minute. Pace-wise, you're going to do your first 10 minutes at 20 strokes a minute at 2k plus 18, then you're going to do your 5 minutes at 2k plus 8, and your final 10 minutes at 2k plus 18 again. If you're working on a rating scale out of 10, then I want you to go the first 10 minutes around about 6 out of 10. Your 5 minutes will probably feel like 8 or 9 out of 10. And although your final 10 minutes, if you're at the same pace, will feel a little bit harder, maybe a 7 out of 10, I want you to hold the same pace you did for the first 10 minutes. Okay, hopefully I've turned off my little app that had a metronome and the little voice squeaking, but we're going to jump into our 10 minutes at 20 strokes per minute, okay? At 2k plus 18, effort level around about 6 out to 10. Right, here we go. One stroke every three seconds. Here we go. 20 strokes per minute. At 2k plus 18. So this first one shouldn't feel that tough. Okay, we've done lots of 20 stroke a minute workout on here. Done half hour, half hour long at this pace. Done intervals mixing it all up. So this first one should really feel that all it's doing is set, setting you up, warming you up for the five minutes in between. Quite a popular session this one because of the little speed bump in the middle. But if you've done one of my 30 minutes at 20 strokes a minute, you'll know it's just a, a long grind that, fair enough, it gets steadily kind of harder to do. The longer it goes on, you might get a bit more tired. But it's not a killer session. Whereas this one, the five minutes in the middle, does give you some level of kind of quite hard exertion, let's say. You're not quite a race pace. Or a 2K race pace anyway and it's only five minutes long but you'll still feel it which is where the two minute rests come in so you might look at it and think I don't need a two minute rest after you've done this first ten minute interval but believe me after you've done the five minute interval, you'll probably want it. When it comes to rest, it's your choice. You can either stop entirely like I do, or you can stop, have a drink, and then continue light rowing to help flush out your muscles. As long as you're not expending energy that you would have otherwise used to hold your pace in the main intervals, it's fine. Right, so we're three and a half minutes in to this first interval. So this should give you time to come do a situation check on your stroke. So let's go through it together. How are your shins? Do you feel they're getting to vertical at the front without you having to lift your heels? too far off the foot plate. Do 
the point being with your heels that you want to get them onto the foot plate to drive back as quick as possible and if you're really far forwards with your heels right off the foot plate it can promote things like a butt scoot or a back that goes flying back too quick so think your shins you're getting to vertical and if you're not is that because you're simply not sliding far enough forwards is it flexibility maybe come back to it after this row and think about it or are you going too far forwards what you don't want is for the seal sorry <laughs> the seat to clatter off your heels at the front A good trick for that is to put a piece of tape or towel or something on the rail to mark the seat point where it needs to be for you to get your shins vertical and no more. Then as you roll forwards, you'll feel a click as you hit that piece of tape or hand towel, toilet paper, whatever not enough to stop the seat which I've seen some people do with bungee cords and stuff like that but just a little click that you feel at the front so it doesn't interrupt your rowing but signals to you that you're either right where you want to be going too far or not too far enough Now what about your arms? You come into the front, you want relaxed shoulders, okay, so you're floppy. Relaxed arms, relaxed shoulders help the power transfer from your legs through your core into the flywheel. Nice relaxed grip in the handle as well. You're not trying to kill it, choke it to death. Just want to hook your fingers over the top, thumbs underneath, with a loose grip, which will also help prevent blisters and sweat problems. And what about your core? Are you nicely engaged for the core at the front and in the back? That makes a huge difference for getting power through. Part of that is about having a powerful back as well. It's not just the core, it's also your back. Sometimes it can help to sit as though you're sitting on top of a carrot. I'm not saying sit on top of a carrot. I'm just saying if you can have a powerful back as though you are, that's kind of the feeling you want to go for. Not a rounded slouchy back like what I have yeah. from time to time. So think about your core and how powerful your back is and we'll come back to this soon but as we've only got a minute to go 
on this first 10 minute interval. Let's just concentrate on finishing strong. Make sure the pace you started off at is pretty much the same as you are now. And if you have your average per 500 meter display turned on, it should be round about what you intended it to be. I mean, give or take a few tenths of a second if you like, but there should be no reason at all on this first interval that you can't hold the same pace the whole way through unless you've set off too fast. All right, last stroke. There you go. There you go. That's a quick 10 minutes. But trust me, next two minutes will be even faster. Wait, that's just maths. <laughs> anyway, have a drink. Excuse me. Like I said, if you want to continue some light rowing once you've had a drink, do so. I tend to just do this. Just enough to pump. My muscles back and forth. Quite like the crew app. It's like this, the Android version of live rowing. I know obviously if you're watching this on Kino Map, then not only is it a faux pas to mention another app, but you won't be able to run an app while connected via Kino Map. But if you're watching this on YouTube, and so you're just looking for a way to control your monitor, and you've got an Android dev device, then Crew is really worth it. And on iOS, Live Rowing is the same app, same company. Just looks slightly different, but just as good. Gives you lots of detail. Makes it really easy to program the monitor, and yeah, it's handy, right? Got 36 seconds to go. Big drink, because we've got quite a tough five minutes coming up. So get yourself ready for it. If you're still rowing, try and time it so that when I start, you start, because that way we can stay in this together. Quote, stroke rates both exactly the same. Don't worry if it takes me two or three strokes to get up to 28. It shouldn't take too long, but just stay with me. So remember, this is your 2K plus eight uh, effort value of kind of like an eight or nine. So here we go, three, two, one, and we're off. So 28 strokes a minute. Oh. Oh. I'm bouncing up and down already. 27, 28, 27, there you go, 20. Don't be surprised if I don't talk as much this time around. <laughs> it's okay if you're on Kino Map, because you'll have music to accompany you on YouTube. You'll just have my flywheel and my breathing. Come on, keep up. One minute done, come on. Keep your pace, don't slip. Try and follow me for drive and recovery time. It's a faster drive than it is a recovery. <laughs> 
Two minutes done. <clears throat> Control your breathing. Halfway. Come on. <clears throat> Two minutes to go. Don't let your technique fall apart. <laughs> Handle over knees. Vertical shins. Drive with your legs. Finish strong. Powerful back. Here we go. 28 strokes to go. Almost there, come on. <sighs> One more stroke. Hmm. Ah. Well done. How'd you get on? Good. <laughs> I'm not Mr. Rogers. But it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Blue sky and chilly in Glasgow today. Make sure and drink. The next session, next interval, might feel like it's gonna be a simple one, but it's still 10 minutes of effort, so be sure to take on some fluid. A minute left of this rest. Hopefully if you are still rowing, you're doing a nice, easy, muscle flushing pace and not a too hard muscle blasting pace. That's not what that's about. This two minutes is meant to set you up so that you can hit this 10 minutes coming up at the same pace as you did the first. But it's gonna to feel tougher because you've just knocked it out of yourself with those five minutes just then. So don't be surprised if it feels, like I said, that if it was an effort level of six out of 10 the first time around, this is gonna feel like a seven out of 10 or maybe higher. Don't be surprised by that. All right, 20 seconds to go. Again, if you're still rowing, try and set yourself up so that you come in at zero when I start, okay? Okay, eight, seven. <sighs> okay, so just 10 minutes and 20 strokes a minute. 2K plus 18, three, one, let's go. <sighs> Good 
it shouldn't take you too long to hit your target pace again. Good thing about having a rest for two minutes and then coming into a slower stroke rate is the first 30 seconds or so. Should feel amazing. Almost like you want to push it harder. But please don't. There's other workouts on here for you to do if you want to do a hard session. This one is meant to be two foundation intervals with a wee spiky speed bump in between. If you think of a training plan like a pyramid, you want the bottom of the pyramid, most of the stuff you do, to be foundation building stuff. So, 20 stroke a minute for 30 minutes at 2k plus 18, that kind of thing. And that builds your engine, your cardio system, everything. So ideally you'd do two or three foundation building sessions a week. Then you've got your mid effort ones which I guess you could call this one where there's an element of speed and power that push your body a little bit rather than just let you grind along and then the top of the pyramid kind of once maybe maximum twice a week is the fast stuff that's like 8 250 meter sprints with one minute in between at maximum pace and stroke rate kind of set that's designed that if you do it right you should be lying on the floor afterwards so it really takes out your body and therefore you don't want to do too many of them in a week so you'll find most plans tend to work around a foundation building of two or three mid-level building of about two and then a sprinty one only once a week Don't worry if you see me drift half a second here or there. Still got that problem with my monitor that it'll pause for a second and then suddenly catch up. And if I'm not paying attention to when that happened, because I'm too busy talking to you. I end up drifting by half a second. That just happened again. I saw you this time. I'm on to you. So just for reference, my pace today is the 20 strokes a minute ones. I'm bang on two minutes. And the 28 strokes a minute, I was aiming for 150, and I think I ended up 149.6 or something, so it's 
very much achievable as long as you set your target pace correctly and I know a lot of people don't want to think about a 2k, 2K pace for their training which is absolutely fine, don't worry, I'm not going to judge you but if you're only using effort levels you have to be aware of what that means but like I say if your first 10 minutes felt like a 6 out of 10 this will most likely feel like a 7 or 8 if you got your pace value right and if you're finding this unachievable and you went out too hard and set your pace targets too high Alternatively, <clears throat> if this is really easy for you, you didn't go hard enough. That's okay. Just stay and do another five minute interval at the pace you did last time. I'll see you through. Don't worry, you don't have to. Three minutes to go. Let's go back to technique quickly. Think about putting your hand all over your knees and then rocking forward, okay? Hand all over knees, rock forward. And then bend knees. probably more important than a boat but it's still a momentum thing and setting yourself up for the next stroke so if your back's already leading forwards from here you don't have to worry about over leaning at the front which is my problem and what I always get wrong so do as I say, not as I do. 40 strokes to go. You can do it. Keep your pace how it should be. You've only got one and three quarters to go. There's no need to slow down. There's no need for your technique to crumple. There's no need to leave me a nasty comment you didn't enjoy it <laughs> which to be fair I don't think anybody has yet but now I've said that we flooded with them just make sure and tag it the cabbage principle so I know you've got this far through hashtag cabbage principle I didn't enjoy that but then let's say a lot of sprint sessions I don't exactly enjoy afterwards I feel great but at the time oy. <clears throat> ah, here we go 12 seconds but talking to you has distracted me enough so this hasn't felt like 10 minutes so I kind of hope same happens for you but just listening to me witter away about anything cabbages included has made this pass by 3 2 1 There we go. Have a quick drink if you want. I'm going to kick into a two minute cool down. 
really lightly. So for future reference, this is if I was to roll in interval periods between, sorry, in rest periods in between intervals, this is what I'd be doing. Very slowly up and down the rail, hardly pressing with my legs at all, hardly pulling at my, my arms at the end at all. Just moving, making sure your legs don't tighten up. Trying to get some of the acid burn out of your legs. Do we still talk about lactic acid? I remember reading something somewhere saying lactic acid is not a real thing. Is it lactate is the real thing? Answers in the comment section. I'm not a sports physiologist. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to play one on the internet. <laughs> I don't even pretend to be a rowing coach on the internet, really. I just do these sessions, program them at a sensible target and rate that's gonna improve your rowing. But it's not like I'm grouping them into numbers for you to do, I'm letting you pick and choose. Fair enough, I spoke about the training pyramid today, but I didn't say, so therefore do video one, six and nine, it's up to you. Or go to someone like Sam Bly at Fit Fitness Matters or one of the many other coaches out there if you want proper advice, because you're not gonna get it from me. Hell, I meant I talk to you about technique. And then when you look at my technique, I should probably keep my mouth shut at all times. All right, here we go, so I'm done. You carry on rowing for a while. Get your legs flushed while I go through my end spiel. Don't, don't stop yet. Uh, if you want to know more about me, I've got a website, pdprowing.com, which basically just discusses what I'm trying to do. Uh, and then uh, I've also got indoorrowinginfo.com, sorry, which talks about everything indoor rowing, so racing teams, training, all that kind of jazz. So these videos are just here as a distraction for you, especially right now when quite a lot of us are stuck at home. Uh, and so you've got this, you've got the YouTube version, which is completely for free, uh, but the downside is you don't get music, you have to play your own music, or you have to just listen to my flywheel and my voice. Uh, or you can go down the Kino Map app route, or I think it works through PC and Mac as well, in the browser, which uh, I believe there's a proper subscription, you have to pay for it, but there's loads of videos, content on there that you can watch, and importantly, you get music along with it as well, so it's not just my voice and my flywheel going away. But hey, maybe you like it. <laughs> it's obvious that I like the sound of my own voice. Anyway, until the next video, thank you so much for joining uh, me in this one. Make sure and click subscribe, comment, do whatever you want. And remember, if you're going to be negative, just use hashtag cabbage. So I know you got this. <laughs> I know you got this far. No idea why I'm saying cabbage. See ya.